My heart says we'll finish top two. <laughs> Spurs will be in the conversation. We're going to beat Liverpool in the League Cup final. Did I just say that? Wow. <laughs> Ah. Right, people, I've got my headphones on for good reason, because I'm about to react to 20 of the biggest fan channels out there, and they're going to give me their head and their heart predictions when it comes to the rest of the season. How do they feel? You know, is it all being a facade where they're showing this optimism? What's the truth? That's what you're going to find out in this video. I will be reacting to them for the first time. I haven't seen any of these. So let's get into it. See what we got here. So we begin with Nicky. Nicky from West Ham Fan TV. Right, let's see what he's got to say for himself. Six at the moment. So where are we going to finish? Um, my head tells me we're going to finish somewhere around ninth, eighth, seventh, something like that. <laughs> But my heart tells me that it's going to be a little bit difficult in this period. So, 10th, oh, if we don't get through this. But, um, yeah, my, my, I'm going to go head over heart. I'm going to go about 7th that we'll finish. But, um, okay. Jim, just to say, I won't be making my apologies to David Moyes because there's always going to be a debate raging on. But thank you very much. Um, <laughs> right. Okay. I can explain. I can explain. Mate, let me... Right, so I messaged Nikki and said, will you do this? I also said, you feel free to apologise to David Moyes because West Ham are doing right, really well right now. I think it's, it's a broader conversation, isn't it, when it comes to David Moyes, that it's the style of play and actually with the talent that they've got, can they do a little bit better than they are right now? Which is a fair question. But I think, look, even if they finish 10th this year, I think that's pretty solid. I think, I guess the problem is that they've had European football for so long. So Nicky's always got his head screwed on. So he's normally... Gets these things right. Although he did get David Moyes slightly wrong. It's not important. I love you, Nicky. My head is saying that 12 is a possibility. 12 is a realistic possibility, I think, for, for Bournemouth, which I'll tell you what, it's not a bad place to be in as a Bournemouth fan, is it? Considering we were all but down. But yeah, I genuinely think now we're starting to see it tick under Iriola. And I think 12 is a realistic target for the club. Um, but listen, you've got to follow your heart. Always follow your heart. I think we could get top half. I really do. I think ninth, which would equal our best ever finish um, as a football club in the Premier League. I think we can get top half. OK, punchy. I get it, right? Some people are going to go, you're full of rubbish, Tom Jordan, you idiot. But he's, I disagree. I think Tom knows his stuff. And I think, I said 12th at the start of the season. They're still in 12. And there's always a team that is just loving life. And I think it's Bournemouth this year. So ninth if you say that at the start of the season, it sounds ludicrous. But that's why we're doing this video. I think it's maybe a little bit too stacked for them to finish ninth. But who knows? This relegation scrap is going to go right to the wire. Now, obviously, I thought Burnley were pretty much doomed until recently. The point deductions coming in, it's going to be serious. I think Sheffield United are good as down. And now you're looking at a four-way scrap between Luton, Burnley, Everton and Forest. Now, I think if Forrest get 12 points, that's them done. And then I'm thinking Burnley, can they get above Luton? I'm fully confident Everton will get themselves out of this position. And I also think Burnley will finish above Luton. I know Luton obviously doing so much better. But when I've actually watched them and quality-wise, I feel like Burnley do have a bit more quality. So I'm going to be confident. I'm going to say company could get this side into 17th if point deductions go through if not then it's going to be done by april the thing with burnley is they were so good last year you feel like there's more of a ceiling in what they can do if they can find a way to make it click but i think the goals just aren't there and matson not being there teller not being there i think it's a massive loss for them and i don't think they've really actually solved the problem there so i think you can see the fear in jacob's eyes James, you are going to like this one. I'm kicking it off with my heart and I am going with Aston Villa to finish. Sorry, can we just focus on the skin fade here? and The cleanliness. That is razor sharp. Great work, Luke. Top of the Sorry, Premier stole his League. moment a bit there. Wild. Did steal his moment. It's not Just doing it again now. Shut up, James. Race. Aston Villa fans have to believe that we can win the league. We've beat Arsenal. We've beat Man City. <laughs> We've Unai Emery. Anything is possible. He's an absolute genius. And we're all absolutely loving life as Aston Villa fans. Right, Luke. Now, as someone who gets done for jinxing that Villa all the time, this one's on you. Okay? It's when it ain't on me this time. It's punchy is what I'm trying to say. But if, if you're not going to do it, then who's going to do it? So I, I'm with you. You know, you can see my predictions. I've done my updated predictions. 
I have Villa pretty high up. But if it does go wrong, don't put it on me. But I appreciate that you've said it with your chest, Luke. And Luke's got an amazing uh, podcast. Go check it out. Well, there's 17 games to go. We are still in the mix. It's not over. My heart is saying Aston Villa can still win the Premier League. Overriding that would be my head. My head is going to predict that Aston Villa will finish in fourth place. I think Champions League football for Aston Villa, for the vision and the vibe of where we're trying to go as a club, I think is absolutely huge. So top four, I think we can do it. We've had a great season so far. I still think the best is yet to come this season from Aston Villa. So first to fourth, I think Aston Villa, that's where we're going to finish. Love that. Love that. Up the Villa is about to say, should we all do it? Up the Villa. Obviously, people that aren't Villa fans won't want to do that. Fascinating stuff. Again, there's a massive dollop of optimism with the fourth one. But I think it shows sensibilities a little bit sometimes, which way you kind of want to go. But as I say, I put Villa up very high. I am slightly nervous about that prediction, but I, I love the positivity. Imagine if Villa won the league. Imagine if Villa won the league. Woo! I swear you'll never see anything like this ever again. Right, who's Believe next? Believe it or not, both my heart oh, and boy. my head both say Luton will stay up in the Premier League this season. Right now, my head is thinking we need a defender in, and if we don't bring in a defender, then Luton will head towards the Championship. But my heart's always remained that losing will stay up. And I feel like we'd, we are getting stronger each week. But we need to manage games a lot better. And I feel like a, a Premier League defender would do that. So fingers crossed we can get one in in the January transfer window. So Lewis has gone for 17th and 17th there. Head and heart, you he think he's confident. I think obviously the centre-back position with Tom Lockyer out now, that is a big thing. I think what's really interesting here when it comes to Luton is the fact that He's not as bothered about a striker. Normally with the teams down the bottom, they can't score enough goals. And in terms of, you know, Colton Morris, he hasn't killed it this year, right? So goals, you could feel like that's a, a problem. But he doesn't feel that. And I think that in itself is a massive positive for Luton because the way they're playing, the crosses that they're getting in, the energy that they play with, they feel like they can go and score goals. So interesting. That's a really interesting one from Lewis. Uh-oh. Right. It's the Wolfmeister. The Wolf Dog. Oh! the loose now stay with me i haven't lost my mind he's called wolfie and he is from forest fan tv now last year he put forward the fact that he thought that forest would finish fourth i i had to walk away from my chair can i just take a can i just take a minute please fourth fourth he said fourth but anyway i think he's had enough banter since then and we've spoken in person and hopefully, you know, he's learned his lesson and this won't be happening again. Okay, what's he gonna say? I've had 365 days to really think about this. Okay. Now, we right. all know- So you've taken, you've taken the right steps. You understand where you're at now. Don't you, don't you say forth, Wolfie. Don't do it to me, okay? Not you, not again. So the bottom three is locked out. The three that came up will probably go back down. The only real question there is will Sheffield break Derby's record or not? I Ooh. hope not. In terms of Forest, Forest have been Didn't hit. Say, then why say it, Wolfie? <laughs> then, then why bring that up? With PSR, they've breached it, so could lose points. But I think we may get away with it. And if we do, my heart says that Forest could finish as high as 11th. Okay. We've just beat Newcastle. We've just beat Manchester United. And if Taiwo is back and Taiwo stays fit, he could be the difference maker for us in the second half of the season. Let now, hide, if I think yeah. about it realistically, if Forrest maybe gets six points deducted, we're going to have to drop that down a bit. So let's go to the head. And I would say that Forrest could finish as high as 14th. And 14th, <laughs> with all the PSR stuff going on and the breaches right. of FFP would not be a bad finish. But Taiwo needs to stay fit and we need a new goalkeeper in this window. What do you think, mate? Do you agree with me or not? No. No, I don't. I don't. Sorry. Do you know what? I'm with you this time, Wolfie. I'm with you, son. Because I get it. You don't have concerns over the squad, really, which is interesting when you've got someone like Steve Cooper who's lost the job, someone who's as loved as he was. You've had to bring in someone else. But I think you feel like you get, Nuno's getting that reaction that is needed. I think it's a great point with Taro Awani. 
I think Steve Cooper's still in the job if he is fit. Because I think he's, his goals per minute uh, it ratio is absolutely insane. It's like in the all-time list. Because I, I looked it up because I'm a loser the other day. I think, look, if you'd get the points deduction, I think that will really kind of hurt you and, and hit you. Um, but do you know what? The more I talk about it, I think actually there is a lot of quality in that squad. So if Nuno can get, you know, a tune out of it. So you let's be bang on this time. Well done. So, let's take a breather from reacting to the fan channels and you guys can react to an unbelievable deal from today's sponsor, Surfshark. Now, what is Surfshark? Well, Surfshark is a VPN. It's a virtual private network. It keeps your online data safe by encrypting all of the data between the device and the internet. Now, with a Surfshark VPN, you can change your real location to any location around the world, over 3,200 servers in over 100 countries. This means you can access new content by exploring the Netflix libraries of Japan, USA, Australia, etc. Also, if you're on holiday, which you might be during the Euros and you want to watch your favorite sporting events, the Euros, you can do with a Surfshark VPN because you can simply change your IP address back to the UK and tuck into your favorite channels. And if you don't have a Surfshark VPN, you won't be able to do that. Simple as. Masking your IP address is essential in becoming private online. A VPN ensures your city, country, and download history isn't linked to your identity. And Surfshark's clean web feature blocks ads, phishing attempts, tracking, and malware, allowing you to surf the web safely. It's leaving me breathless. It's that good a deal. And the final thing that sets Surfshark apart and provides even more value is that you can use your Surfshark VPN on unlimited devices. So if you currently don't have a VPN, it makes utter sense to have one to watch what you want, wherever you want to safely. Take a look at the link in the description and get an exclusive Surfshark holiday deal. Enter the promo code ALLCOT to get up to six additional months for free by clicking on that link in the description. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee, so there is absolutely no risk. So why not give Surfshark a go? Right, here we go, Rory. Chelsea Rory, previously known as Chelsea Rory, although I think he's still known as Chelsea Rory on Twitter. Yeah, pretty sure. Right, let's see what he's got to say. James Alcott, as always, it's an honour to appear on your channel. Thank you so much for having me. Now, with regard to Chelsea's season and what I'm hoping in the league, I just want to put it out there that our season now doesn't revolve around league position at all. Our season now, the only way that we can save this sorrowful season is by somehow winning some silverware. That is the only way to put a positive spin on this fairly hateful season. So my priority is somehow winning the League Cup, somehow... I love, do you know what I love about Rory? The purity. The purity of it being about trophies. He's never wavered from that. He never wavers from that. It's about winning trophies. And of course it is. Of course it is. Like to the purity that he gets to, I, I, I have to live in a different world, sadly. But it is all about trophies. And th that's a great thing about, I guess, about being a Chelsea fan. As bad as you are in the league, you always have the possibility of trophies. That's always been the world that Chelsea fans have been able to live in. Anyway, let's see what it says. So he's saying League Cup. He wants to win the League Cup. Getting to Wembley and lifting a trophy. Somehow doing well in the FA Cup. But with regard to the league, I think my head says that we're going to do okay. And I think that we can just about qualify for Europe, which again would be the dream. And I'm not sneery about Europe. You know, certain fans, they don't, they don't want to get into certain European competitions. That just isn't me at all. I think playing in Europe, the potential to plant your flag on a continent, and Chelsea do have a very rich history in Europe. I believe that we can just about get there. So the dream scenario is that we finish sixth being as optimistic as possible. The dream scenario is six. My realistic prediction, I think we just miss out, you know. It's horrible, isn't it? I think we just miss out in the league and we somehow get there in the cup. Realistically, we finish eighth, but the dream is six. But it's all going to be okay because we're going to beat Liverpool in the League Cup final, get into Europe that way, win it next season. Right. So what I would love to know, Chelsea fans, talk to me. If... And I don't know what the numbers are, if it's 7th or 8th or ninth or whatever, when it comes to Europe with the 5th place thing, you can fill me in on that one. If Rory's right about just being in Europe, being in the Conference League next year, if Chelsea got themselves into the Conference League somehow, which I'm not sure I see right now, but if they were able to do that, what would that mean for next season? Would that help with the growth of the club and the players and the Premier League position? Or do you think it would be a hindrance? Let me know in the comments down below. I think I've comfortably Baz. got the most difficult job on this because <laughs> the start yeah. of the season, 
I said between 11 and 14. Well, Everton's points at the moment. Put Everton between 11 and 14. <laughs> right, and Vaz, Vaz messaged me and he wasn't happy with my predictions at the start of the season because I had him down there and he was very confident, as can be seen by the smugness in his face right now, as much as I love this beautiful man named Vaz. But yeah, he was he was like, how could you, how could you put a 17th or what it was? I can't remember where we put him. And he was like, I was like, well, you know, you've been down there the last couple of seasons, but he knew better. We've obviously had 10 taken off, which put us towards the relegation, well, right on the cusp of the relegation zone. And we might get another charge. <laughs> we don't know how that'll play out. So this is really difficult. Very but you tough. know what? If they don't get any of these 10 back, I think Everton will finish about 15th. Maybe we might creep into that 14th. If we get some back and no more taken off, I'm going to say 12th. I'm going to say 12th, even with some points taken off. That's how confident I am. What's interesting with Everton is, is the sort of galvanizability. Now, everyone's kind of going, you'll be fine, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. Don't worry about Everton, you'll be fine. That is dangerous. I don't think that would happen with Sean Dyche in this group, and especially with the fans feeling the way they're feeling about it all, the whole situation. But of course, more points is going to make it harder, and then you're kind of putting pressure on the good form instead of it being something that's kind of come out of the blue. You saw it with Derby a couple of years ago. They would get the points deduction and they were okay. And then they got the second one and it was sort of like, well, you've got to keep up this form now. And it was a different kind of pressure and it started to hurt them a little bit. So that's something that is worth keeping an eye on when it comes to Everton and the good form that we've seen. But he's got them playing well. So I get Baz's confidence. Right, it's the Sharkatronosaurus Rex from SDS. Love the old SDS. Get your boy Jimbo back on. One of our arguments with people on Twitter. It's been far too long. Obviously, coming off the back of last season, I would love to have said first, but my heart, my heart, my heart says we'll finish top two. My heart. <laughs> my, 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 I'm sorry, can we get out on slow mo? My heart says we'll finish top two. Let me show you the face. My heart says we'll finish. Poor there. <laughs> it's like, I'm desperate to say first. I want to say first, but I also want to retain my integrity. And I can't, he couldn't do it. That is why this is great. Head and heart. He wants to say it, but his eyes scream, we can't do it. Which I don't expect from Shark. Top two. My heart says we'll Top finish. Two. <laughs> Top two. Top two. Top two is second, isn't it? If you don't really think you're going to win. Sharky. I love you, Sharky. Sharky wants to believe. He, he just needs something back. Like a lot of Arsenal fans right now, he just needs something back. <laughs> First, like my heart generally says we'll finish first. Like, <laughs> my heart generally, <laughs> I love that. My heart generally thinks I've finished first. What does your heart say? <laughs> love this, Sharky. This is great. Sharky, you need to see this. You need to see this. First, I don't want to play this one last time. But my heart, my heart, <laughs> my heart says petulant. we'll finish top two. Heart my heart say? says we'll finish first. Like, my heart generally says we'll finish first. Like, I don't see why we couldn't. Obviously, right now, we're not looking in great form. <laughs> but my my head doesn't say that. My head says we'll yeah. finish third. That's it. Your head's Man City are looking it. scary again. They're looking like they can, they want that fourth in a row. Um, and Liverpool are looking scary again. These are the two greatest teams in the last 10 years in the Premier League. You know? And they're looking like they're going to go head-to-head. -head. And Arsenal really have to prove that we're the new boys that can that can challenge as well. Joe, I love it. See, this thing, that's why Shaki was struggling there. Because he, he likes to think through what he's going to say. And he has fought it through. And so his head is kind of charging past his heart in this one. And I agree. I think they'll finish third. So my head says third. My head says third and we'll go far in the Champions League. That's what my head says. But my heart I'm says we'll win sure. the league. <laughs> I really hope we'll win the league. Come on, Arteta. Yeah. Can you do something for me? Before the season started, I predicted Fulham would finish 16th, just out of that relegation scrap, but struggling to repeat last year's heroics. My head now says we'll finish 13th. So that's an upgrade. But my heart says somewhere similar, probably below 10th. But I fancy that maybe we can make something happen in the cup. Obviously got that semi-final second leg against Liverpool and an FA Cup tie against Newcastle in the fourth round. Maybe Fulham can end up at Wembley this year. That is where this season hinges. Interesting. Yeah, I think, I think we all thought there'd be that second season syndrome. But overall, they've sort of, you know, they've got themselves in a good place. Polina in the next couple of weeks, when it comes to the January transfer window, it's going to be interesting to see if he does stick around. Um, but if he does, th they feel like a cup team this year because they could go and beat anyone, really. They do have good quality. So I, I think this is a good 
place to be when it comes to Jack. And, and ultimately, the Premier League is a good place for Fulham to be, right? Bearing in mind, I've always there been super confident about what Postacoglu could do for Spurs. The evidence that was shown in the first part of this season has, has concreted that idea in my head that we've got one of, if not the best manager in the Premier League. <laughs> so, my head... Sorry, can I just predict? Can I make a prediction? If he doesn't get a dig in about Arsenal, I'll be amazed. Or yeah, my head says that Tottenham Hotspur will finish in the top four this season. And bearing in mind, head that would suggest the most sensible and logical way of looking at what's <laughs> happened. And my heart. My heart says Tottenham Hotspur will launch a title challenge this year. I'm not saying we can win the league. It's very difficult. Manchester City are 100% going to come back into it with De Bruyne and uh, Haaland coming back and you know all their best players coming back to full fitness. But Spurs will be in the conversation. And the fact that anyone out there would suggest that that is a crazy thought <laughs> is showing us a level of disrespect and a demonstration of a limited footballing knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, never been happier being a Spurs fan. Not for many, many, many years. So, up the Spurs, up the Gange. And let's just see what we can do this season. Up, up the Gange? Not on the old, <laughs> neon Scooby Dooby Doos, are we? Flav, up the Gange? All right, kind of channel, mate. I knew he'd chuck a dig in. I knew it. <laughs> Why did we all get into football? That's right. Financial fair play. That's for the. <laughs> That's where the football's really played, mm. off the pitch. Uh, if it means, by any means, that Sheffield United could actually survive, then uh, my head says we, we may get a bit of a break thanks to other clubs. But, you know, realistically, that that's still a tall order. So, head prediction, 19th. If he, I'd be amazed, like, can you find it in your heart to believe that Sheffield United could get out of this? I can't. I don't think most neutrals can. So I'm fascinated to see what Hal says. Heart. Oh. My heart wants what my heart wants. And my heart always wants Sheffield United to win games of football regularly. Even taking into account what I've just said uh, with that financial fair play, which you have to include and you have to consider, it's, it's still going to be heart saying with an incredible run towards the end, with the right transfers, with the right man at the helm, everyone pulling in the same direction. Probably still 19th. <laughs> well done, Al. Right, Emil. Newcastle United, what are we saying? Let's go. This is an awkward one, isn't it? not going to lie. It's been up and down. There's been a lot of heartbreak along the way. Yeah. And yeah, I'm feeling pretty ragged by it right now. But I get let's bet. be honest. Like the uh, Champions League, is, oh, does that still sting for Newcastle fans? Or have you kind of let that go? Be good to know how you feel about that one. A second half of the season, it boards well for Newcastle. We always seem to kick on in this half, so I'm hoping that we can continue that trend this season. Although injuries aren't really going our way, we might have lost Joe Linton for the season. Uh, there is no sign of Harvey Barnes. Don't know where he's gone, but look, head prediction for this season says that we will finish in the top half. I think we might finish out of the European spaces, though, which means maybe eighth or ninth for Newcastle. However, heart prediction. Newcastle are a team that love it when the odds are stacked against them. I will say that we can potentially finish sixth this year. It's not time to give up on Newcastle at all. It really, really isn't. I mean, the injuries are wild. But I think, I think as long as there's an acceptance of what this season could be because of what's gone on this year when it comes to injuries, I think when you've had enough bodies... You've been an exciting team to watch, and that is you have to cling on to that. You've got to cling on to that. Another team absolutely hammered by injuries. Brentford. Let's see what uh, Billy the Bee from Besotted Brentford Podcast has to say. All of a sudden, something we weren't expecting. Bang, Rico Henry out. Boom, Sharda out. Boom, Jensen out. Boom, De Silva out. Boom, Norgard out. Listen, we had so many players out injured. It really affected us. Ivan Tony. It's back. It's like Christmas has come late for us. And also we've got to sort out our defence because we've been a little bit shaky in that area. So my heart is saying we're going to finish 12th because I really do believe that we're going to finish 12th. 12th. But also my head is saying we're going to finish 12th because uh, I'm a positive person. And as Brentford fans, we're just happy to be here. See, Billy knows his club, though. And, and time and again, Brentford, 
I've said this on this channel, you don't doubt Brentford. Very dangerous to do that. 12 feels like a little bit too much for me, but we'll see at the end of the season. Billy, feel free to clip this up and call me a chump. The Meister's up. Here we go. Right, so head prediction. Look, I've had too many years of my recent life absolutely ruined by the stress that is Manchester City. So if you think I'm not going to pick them as my head pick, you're absolutely mad. That is the sort of, you know, the phrase of living in someone's head rent free. And this isn't a dig at Paul. I've seen this in every conversation I have when I'm asking a Liverpool or Arsenal or any other fan, do you truly believe? Can you outlast? Can you get past Man City? And it's understandably there. And because they've just been hurt in the past by Man City's, you know, brilliance on the pitch. Because they just have the ability to ruin years upon <laughs> years of your life by being really, really good at football. So, yeah, it makes sense that they've got the muscle memory of doing it. They've got the quality of footballer. And, of course, they've got 115 charges outstanding. So, no reason why they shouldn't win the league. My heart. He said there, <clears throat> if anyone was wondering. Art, however, is the thing that's kept me going in the face of Manchester City misery for all of those years because Liverpool uh, are my heart selection. Why wouldn't they be? They're my football team. They're the team I know the most about and they're the only team that's ever really been able to stop this modern iteration of Manchester City. So, yeah, they've got good vibes. They've got some good new fresh players and they've got Jürgen Klopp. So as long as they've got those things, in addition to the guys who've been there and done it, your Trent, your Mo Salah, your Virgil van Dijk, your Alisson Beckers, um, it exists in possibility that they can recapture the Premier League title. So that's what my heart will always say. So go and watch my predictions because I put Liverpool very high up and it was similar reasons to Paul. And actually me and Paul have done some videos recently as well on the channel. So if you haven't checked them out, make sure you do, especially if you're a Liverpool fan. The thing that I think is important here it's that mix of the fresh faces, but Jurgen Klopp's ability to utilise those fresh faces. That is what I consider still gives Liverpool a real shot at the title this year. And I get it. Kevin De Bruyne has kind of turned up and it's like, oh, he's the new hot boy at school. Did I just say that? Wow. <laughs> he's the new hot boy at school. My point is not for me. I'm not I'm married and, you know, happy heterosexual. Not that you can be unhappy if you're not a het. What I'm trying to say is Kevin De Bruyne has come back. He's the new shiny thing. He's got a new haircut, okay? And, of course, he's un unbelievable at football, okay? But there's going to be lots of twists and turns. That's just the, the recent twist, which I think puts the fear in the eyes of Liverpool fans. I think I saved that, didn't I? <laughs> Good. Did I? I don't think I did, did I? Headwise, you know, probably 15th or 16th, given the fact uh, that there are undeniably three worse teams than us in the division, and you've got points deductions for Everton and potentially even Nottingham Forest as well. It's not feeling good for Palace. It, like, we did it on the survey. They want Hodgson out. They really want him out, and, and Dan's had enough as well. It's, it feels proper doom and gloom there. But heart-wise, I can't really see us pushing above sort of 13th or 14th, and, and that... I suppose is why so many Crystal Palace fans feel as though we are treading water and why we are so desperate to get this season out of the way, wipe the slate clean and then get a new manager in from the start of the pre-season into the summer of 2024 with a transfer budget, wave Roy on his way and hope for a brighter tomorrow. But I think for the rest of this campaign, it is looking very much like a bit of a damp squib for everyone from a Crystal Palace perspective. I'll be an obsessed, my boy Joe. Here we go. My head says that it's going to be a really tough end to the Premier League season, hopefully with a lot of European football left to be played and a lot of key members of the squad yet to come back from injury. My head says we finish 10th. My heart, on the other hand, would love us to finish again in the top six and, and carry on to, to better our league position. We've done that for the last three or four seasons. Um, so, yeah, my, my heart would say that we finish within that top six and we'll go for a, a sixth place finish for, for the Albion. I think there's a, I think the quality's there. I think the quality's there for Brighton. Watch out for Brighton. Anyone can get pumped by Brighton. Told you that time and again. Thankfully, James, Wolves are in a much better position than when I did this video for you last year. Um, we started to score goals. I think that was our biggest problem last year. But even at the start of this season, when Gary O'Neill came in, there was so much uncertainty. A lot of 
people outside of, well, even Wolves fans to be fair, but mainly outside of uh, the Wolves fan base, really tip Wolves to struggle. Look, there's a long, long way to go, but I think Wolves have shown that the group that they've got is strong enough to compete. We've made Molyneux a fortress, I think. Yeah, one of the Touch success wood, stories. At the moment, we're doing well in, and unbeaten there in nine in all competitions. So, we're doing well. Well, my head and heart are both saying the same thing, really. I think we're going to be in between that sort of ninth and eleventh position. I think that's a shout when it comes to Wolves, is that, you know, for them to be in that boring mid-table position is a massive, massive success story for them. And I think Dave's right. They've proven me wrong, especially if they can get through this season without going down. That is... The remit, I think, with the financial troubles and losing your manager right at the start of the season. Hello, I'm Mark Goldbridge from the United Stand and these are my predictions with my heart and my head for Manchester United for the remainder of the season. So, the heart says we could get fifth and maybe, maybe some of the clubs in the Champions League could perform well and then we get an extra spot in it. I, I, I... I... That, okay, Mark, that's very convenient. I'll let you speak. We work this out on the principle that we haven't had some of our better players this season. True. Luke Shaw, Casemiro, Martinez, they're all coming back. We start playing better football and we climb the league in the second part of the season with better performances and less silly goals given up. So I would put us fifth. Their head says that Manchester United are wearing exactly where they need to be. We're seventh or eighth by the time you're watching this video. We, we've had a bad season. We're not anywhere near the better teams in this league and therefore we're going to continue to have an up and down season to the summer and we'll probably finish around seventh or eighth in which case we could be in the dreaded conference league ah i'm not sorry to run <laughs> oh mark i love you man good stuff mark it looks like he's looking at me as a little person hang on uh, oh wrong way oh mark <laughs> Stop, stop staring at me. Will you stop staring at me, Mark? Interesting stuff from Mark. Let's get off Mark's face. It's scaring me a little bit. So this is what's interesting about what Mark said. Now, uh, the perspective I've had is that I think they've been fortunate and I've kind of already decided that they'll be less fortunate in the second half of the season. And so despite performances getting better, which I mean, I don't think they get much worse, they might not get the same amount of luck and therefore they might get the same amount, if not less points. That's where I'm at with this. But if they continue to get the same amount of luck and the performances improve and therefore confidence improves, then then that maybe it is there for Man United because they do need to bring those players back that will make a difference. So I get what Mark's saying, but let's agree to disagree. I think they'll be a bit lower than that, if I'm honest. Right, last but not least, my boy, Boovie's up, I think. We haven't heard from him yet. There he is. Hi, James. Here are my head and heart predictions for Man City going into the remainder of the season. My heart is saying that City are on for at least a double. I know that's crazy. And no City fan is sitting there saying, oh, we need to be winning more silverware oh. after last season, how special that was. But I look at the quality in Europe. I look at the quality in the domestic divisions. Arsenal and Liverpool, the major rivals to Man City in the Premier League title. Arsenal don't have the bottle. Liverpool certainly do, but they're still a side in transition. I still think they're midfield. Is that a Premier League title winning midfield? In your opinion, for me, there's still a little bit of uh, a little bit of a shortage, especially if McAllister picks up a book in Sabozai so were to get injured, for example. But I think they're very, very close. My head actually thinks we're not going to do as well in the Champions League. I think retaining the Champions League is nigh on impossible. And you look at Real Madrid. It's destiny for Jude Bellingham, in my opinion. Ooh. So my heart is, I think we'll pick up maybe a league and an FA Cup and maybe get to the final of the Champions League. But my, I think my head suggests maybe a little bit less than that, which is obviously fair enough based on what we did last season. OK, good point from Boovey. I think that's spot on, to be honest. I believe there is things missing. Mares missing in those goals and important goals, important moments. Gundogan, same thing. Uh, De Bruyne is fit now. Can he stay fit? Like, you, you are concerned about Sabozlai. There has to be a concern about De, uh, De Bruyne. And therefore, you're kind of... It's about the rest of the team. And then just that overall sort of jadedness and maybe sort of uh, the gluttony of trophies leading to an element of sort of lack of, not hunger, but just that little bit that gets you over the line. I think that could play a part in this. And I, I, I do not see a treble. I just don't uh, in any form uh, this year for them. 
I mean, at that said, they are outrageously good, aren't they? So I think it's the intangibles that I think are getting on Foovy's mind and maybe my mind as well. Important thing for you guys, make sure you head to the description, check out all the creators that were kind enough to put forward their videos, like the video, and let me know your head to heart predictions in the comments down below.